Hey everybody, this is Carl here with Trilobite Studios, and today I am here with my co-host Josh. Hello. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Jurassic World Dominion trailer. Now, I am a Jurassic Park fan, but I am nowhere near as big a Jurassic Park fan as Josh is. So why don't we just uh, just go ahead and jump into the discussion. Um, what do you think? Uh, the trailer was good uh, for the most part, but I f don't know if it how it's going to turn out. Uh, if you remember Fallen Kingdom, they had great trailers, but the movie was kind of lackluster, uh, as in story-wise. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely remember that. Uh, the the trailers for Fallen Kingdom seem made it made it seem really good, like they were gonna spend a lot more time on the island, and that they were gonna like it was gonna be more focused on saving the dinosaurs, and not so much on this is now a horror movie with a really bad like. Uh, environmentalist message at the end <laughs> but kind of um well i mean they released the dinosaurs I mean, onto the remember mainland. the in whole indoraptor was supposed to be the hidden secret of the story but it's kind of hard to do when you have a toy line that goes with your product i mean it also just kind of i don't know D dominion or uh fallen kingdom just didn't really feel like a jurassic park movie it you know what it kind of reminds me of alien <laughs> Well, that and uh, <laughs> JP3, how it kind of was perceived by the uh, community. I mean, but I don't think Jurassic Park 3 went for horror elements as hard as Fallen Kingdom did. No, it definitely didn't. But yeah. It was, like... I mean, J Jurassic Park 3 was all over the place. That's true, but at least it, it I, I don't, at least they, it felt still like a Jurassic Park movie. You know, like they're on the island, they're running from the dinosaurs. Yeah, but that's, that's all they did. <laughs> that's all they did. <laughs> I mean, that's fine, right? For a Jurassic Park movie. I mean, what is the first one really? Except like they're all on the island. They're running the from the dinosaurs. The first one was a survival, but it led into it. You know, it was uh, okay. What happens like if you have a zoo? Listen, he wanted that to... goes uh, the shit. <laughs> he he wanted to take his kid parasailing, and so they did, and then he just got stuck on the island. That's... Wait, was that the second one? That's the third one. That's the third one. Yeah, I always that was get, the I always opening get, of the third one. That's right. I always get Lost World and uh, the and Lost Jurassic World Park one 3. was the compies attacking the British uh, girl. Oh, that's right. That's right. And, and they then, stumble across site B. And then what's her face goes to the island to take pictures of the dinosaurs and Sarah Jeff, Hardy. Yeah, and then Jeff Goldblum goes and yeah, tries to bring her back. And tries to bring her back, but she's like, no. Anyway, that's we're really off topic, but Fallen Kingdom. We can both agree it was kind of a shitty movie. Yeah, it had its moments, but... It, yeah, it, th there were some good for moments. For the most of it, yeah, it was pretty crap. Yeah, it was pretty crap. But this one... This one looks really good from the trailers. I mean... One thing I can say is, finally, it's more scientifically accurate animal. Yeah, at least we've got some feathered dinosaurs, which is pretty cool, but... I, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I think they really need to up their game... Uh, with this one. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, like, the big shocks of the trailers. Like, I don't think there was any, like, shock, really, with any of these trailers. Not really. Or, well, with, with the, the first trailer well, that we saw. This is the first trailer, so it's not supposed to have the big... But, workout. like, we already knew that, uh, uh, Dr. Grant and, uh, oh my god, what's her name? Dr. Sattler. Thank you. Dr. Sattler and Dr. Grant were coming back. We already knew Jeff Goldblum was coming back. We basically already knew everything that they showed us in the trailer, except for, you know, feathered dinosaurs with, like, the pyroraptor. Actually, pyro if you've been following uh, the escalation of this story... So we knew that, too. Yeah. They, okay. back in, when they did Big Rock, uh, they were talking about doing more scientifically accurate animals, and that would mean feathers at some point. Okay, I, di I didn't realize that. I thought that this was the first time we had seen you know the the creature or the the dinosaurs with feathers on them um no they were talking about doing more scientifically accurate animals when uh battle of big rock came out and even before that when uh they were first doing the jurassic world trilogy uh they were talking about eventually going from what we knew the animals to look like by engine to other companies making them making them more scientifically accurate and going it's like uh, instead with, of like movie monsters make them more like animals. actual animals yeah yeah see i i i like that except it's kind of hard to do when you have a six foot tall velociraptor 
<laughs> well, again, the Velociraptor was Engine's project, and Henry Wu was just basically, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck. Right, but I, I almost feel like that's just a bit of a retcon to explain away, like, why they looked so bad. You know what I mean? Because you could get away with stuff like that in the 90s where you could be like, yeah, this is a Velociraptor, and people would just buy it. They would just eat it up, except for people who knew. But, like, the mass public would just be like, oh, yeah, that's a Velociraptor. But now, because of, like, the internet and, you know, people have more exposure to actual scientific evidence of dinosaurs, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, look, this is a Velociraptor. And they're like, no, it's not. First of all, it's six feet tall. It doesn't have any feathers. And it, it what? <laughs> um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but you got to remember, the first film was more of a... Uh, pluck and play from the book that's true which in the book it was henry Wu basically taking dinosaur dna from multiple sources throwing it together and seeing what happened yeah that, that that's true i kind of forgot about in the, book. the novel uh he says it's a velociraptor mongoliensis which is the standard velociraptor species yeah that everybody thinks of when you hear the word velociraptor but in the actual novel, um, that's just because that's where he was getting the amber from. So that's what they went with. Oh. The fossils that they were distracting the DNA, which they said was a good percent, but not enough, probably came from Deinonychus, which, given the size, would sure. make sense. Okay, but that doesn't excuse... Okay, this is really off topic. We're, we've only talked about the trailer for like two minutes, but... <laughs> Well, you're it, the one that keeps getting off. Okay, rail. but it still doesn't excuse the fact that in the first movie, when they're on the dig in where was it, Utah, Montana, Montana, whatever. I don't know the locations. They said I, it right on the dang screen. Okay, but I haven't watched Jurassic Park in I don't know, maybe like a good two or three years, and they're in Montana, and and Dr. Grant, who's supposed to be this really professional paleontologist, is just like, ah, yes, a Velociraptor here in Montana. We found one. That's because Dr. Grant uses Velociraptor as an, uh, just a throw around name for raptor species. Well, he shouldn't do that because he's a paleontologist. <laughs> well, yes, I get that. But if you remember, he says Velociraptor Arthropus, which Arthropus is the Deinonychus. He should have so just, just, he should have just said a raptor. But even though... Okay, that, that that's besides the point. Anyway, let, let's go back to talking about the actual trailer. Yes, so, please. So the trailer opens, and what do we first see in the trailer? The trailer opens, and uh, you see... Pierce Rolophus running through the snow. Right, through the snow. Um, let's just kind of break it down piece by piece, and I'll try to add some, some reference images on the screen uh, as we go. Um, so we see... We see, oh my god, what's it, Chris Pratt, oh my, what's his name? Owen Grady. Owen Grady, it's Chris Pratt. We see Mario <laughs> <laughs> riding a horse. That's right, he is going to be Yeah, he's going to be Mario. <laughs> so we see Mario riding a horse with some Parasaurolophus, para kind of like, almost like herding them, like cattle. Is, is that yeah, what we're going? Yeah, literally we... what it looks like is him and a couple cowboys uh, going after uh, a group <laughs> of Parasaurolophus. Like, I, I like the concept, but are we really just turning into, like, uh, True Grit, but, you know, Jurassic World Edition? Is I mean, he going to have to, like, shoot blue at the end of the movie? I hope not. Oh my god, could you imagine that? I mean, she has a baby, so... What if he has to shoot the baby, too? It's rabies. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Old <God>. Yeller. <laughs> We're going old yeller on here. Okay, so we see that we see that opening, and then and then it transitions, uh, and we see we we do see a lot of you know he's like taming the Parasaurolophus, and he's literally cowboying around with them. I, I did notice one thing. Yeah, um, they have two different skin patterns. Oh yeah, they do, don't they? They have the one that looks like the typical Parasaurolophus with the white streak going down the uh, spine. But also, there's ones that almost have like a bongo look uh, with s stripes. That That's true. I didn't even think about that. Um, uh, that but yeah, uh, I mean, and these animals have a much thicker neck. Also, how did we go from like 20 dinosaurs getting out of the lab like in New York to all of a sudden now there's just Parasaurolophus running around. There is enough Parasaurolophus that you can be a Parasaurolophus rancher. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Why is that funny? I don't. It's just kind of funny. Okay. Yes, people have actually uh, pointed that out. Uh -huh. And let me explain. When the Indoraptor event happened, it was only halfway through the auction. Yeah, I know that. Okay, we don't know of all the animals that were sold. How many items were up for auction? And they never said. A couple thousand? I mean, remember he said we can only get like 17 species and when they get there, they had much more already captured. That's true. The only reason why they even called the, uh, Owen and Claire in is to find Blue. So, so they could auction they her off. You know, so they can make a new Indoraptor with her genetic code. Right, but... At the, okay. That, that Again, that's beside the point. I just find it funny that now there's enough Parasaurolophus that you can be a Parasaurolophus rancher. I would if I could. I, I mean, I, w I probably would too, I but mean, it's just kind of funny to me. The thing is, the Parasaurolophus in the trailer are not the same ones from Engine. No. The, like I said, the horn... The um, crest ornamentation is different the neck is thicker it looks like a much beefier animal to begin with right which to be honest probably was more accurate because the frail engine one that we've seen in, from in the original uh clone the uh others the original trilogy yeah in jp2 was you know the 90s look it was yeah it shrink wrapped was... and had almost a duck or swan like quality sure but this one actually has more of a Horse running on two legs. I mean, I guess, they, they did. They it. did call it the cow of the Cretaceous. Well, that was Hadrosaurus. Oh but my just bad. In general, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, what do you? Okay, I, I can't get over this. How do you make money as a Parasaurolophus rancher? What do you do? I'm do you slaughter them? I'm assuming. Do you eat Parasaurolophus meat now? I'm assuming if you're raising them like cattle, yeah. That that's just but because they they're not, not going to produce milk. No, but you can probably do a breeding. Well, the like male a... ones do. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> keep it PG, man. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, if you look at it, there's zebra ranchers. They don't eat zebras, but people breed zebras on farms for wildlife parks and stuff like that. Yeah, or okay. you know, maybe someone wants to do pairs for olive fish racing. That would okay. That's just blowing my I mind. I mean, but. Yeah, in general, they'll probably be more of a meat and leather production type thing. Yeah, I never thought about that. But, but it, the it, thing is, it's like, would Owen does it do, taste like chicken? Yeah, like, would, would Owen do that? What This this just, it begs so many questions. Um, so the next scene we see is, the, it's the Apatosaurus, and it's like standing in, in a, a like wood. A, almost uh, like a logging yard. area. Yeah, it's log, like a, like a, a log yard. yard. And um, we get the whole dinosaurs are, are magical type deal. But then, after, I mean, honestly, we've seen enough of the Apatosaurus now. But then we, we jump ahead, and we see Blue, and she's got a baby. She's got a little baby Blue. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. Kind make, of doesn't make sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Especially since Blue, the Velociraptor, is the only one left yeah. that we know of. Right. Does this imply, like, crossbreeding between another species Either of Either that, raptor? but since the baby looks identical to blue, maybe asexual reproduction? I was going to say maybe asexual reproduction, or maybe it's a clone. I don't think so, because think so? What if... it looks too much like blue. So the only thing I can think of is asexual reproduction. In I mean, we've already seen that in the first movie. And certain animals can do that. Right. So I guess but, it, blue being so close to birds, I never, I don't know any bird that can do that. I mean, but then again, this is this is Jurassic World logic, so like it's going kind of. I mean, off they of did Jurassic. use a T Rex to uh, do a blood transplant, right? So which only works once <laughs> if you actually were to do it. It would only work once if you're lucky. Yeah, not even. I don't even think it would work once. Actually, they asked someone asked a vet. I forget which video I saw mm -hmm. and about that, and it's like, yeah, you could probably do it one time. That's about it. Jeez. Um. Well. Okay. So. Oh, hold on a second. So, if we're going off Jurassic World logic, so they took the blood of Rexy, right? Yeah. And injected it into Blue. We know that Rexy was from the original run. Of Jurassic, uh, the Jurassic uh, animals. Rexy never bred. Right, but she had, had a frog baby. DNA. So did Blue. 
Wait, she did? I didn't yeah. think I didn't think the Jurassic World raptors used the, the frogs. Yeah, that was the basic and then oh. they added whatever else into it. Like uh, I think uh black throated monitor lizard was given to her for her uh coat pattern. So she could put potentially reproduce asexually is what we're going is what we're saying essentially. That was well, a long clearly, way to say. obviously, she did. Either that, or she met up, you know, with some nice, uh, some nice Utah raptor that just happened to also be on the boat, and now, now she's got a kid. I mean, I don't know what other animals would have been. They're there. gonna move in together. <laughs> Start a. They've got a family. She's got a great job. She works as like a herder on fucking Owen's ranch. <laughs> You're, you're never gonna let this down, are you? <laughs> no, I just think it's fun. I mean, it's a cool like idea. Don't get me wrong, but it's just it's kind of funny in execution. Um, I mean, I think it's cool though that we that we see that Blue has a baby now, but we also see other raptors in the trailer. Uh, yeah, they're not Velociraptor though. They're another type of raptor. I forget how you pronounce the name, but it's um. Again, another North American species. I think they come from Canada. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. Um, but yeah, they they're also in that. And then there's the Pyroraptor. Yeah, the, I, which we see a little bit later, which we'll talk about. But let's let's kind of wind back because we jumped ahead for the other raptors. So the next scene that we see that's like of importance is we see the whole like Owen Grady reaching out to touch Blue again as she's like protecting her baby. Does this mean that she's like like feral? Is she, has she gone like feral? Well, or is she? I think she recognizes him. Right. But it's one of those things. It's like she's been living in California since the incident. Yeah. And before that, she was on Isla Nublar, which for... is a crazy long way to go. What? California? Yeah. Weren't they in New York? No. Where were they in California? In Dominion? Yeah. Or uh, Fallen Kingdom? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were in New no. York. No. Oh. Man, you learned something. I think you're thinking King Kong here for some reason. I was thinking Jurassic. No, that was San Francisco. San Diego. (laughs) Still California, but. I told you I'm a fan, but like I'm not as big of a fan. Little F. Yeah, little F. (laughs) (laughs) Not a not a capital F. Um, but we see you know Owen Grady, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna touch Blue again. Which does does that technically make him like a grandfather? I mean, he did. Cause Racer. yeah, he raised Blue and as a Charlie and parent, and Delta as a parent. So, I mean, in Raptor society, yes, he's like the H- elder. However, it's one of those things. It's like, can you really consider yourself a family if you're two different species? I think that's a little racist <laughs> or species. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe species. No, I think it, they like, can be a family. <laughs> I mean, so, it's like kind of like a, having a pet dog. I guess so. Or a uh, cat. I mean, maybe. I mean, I understand people have uh, fur babies, but you know, yeah, they're that's not a, really part of the family. It'd probably by be blood. a little. It'd probably be a little bit weird. So then we see like, okay, this is. I thought the next scene was really cool, where we see the mosasaur, uh, actually like come up and attack like a crab fishing vessel. Yeah, you don't I, see that on Deadly Sea. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm assuming this is like the worst epi- or the best episode of Deadliest Catch, and. Uh, you know that she she comes out of the water and just absolutely tears the boat over. My question is, why would she be attacking a crab boat? That's yeah, that's my question too. I think I they mean, just wanted I a guess cool the shot. The boat itself would look like a large mammal, yeah, or from, a whale. Yeah, from, from the like bottom. underneath, she would definitely. But but to attack the crab pot because we very specifically see, see her, attack her attacking the crab, a crab the pot. pot. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I could see if Though, she like hit it from the well, bottom. What do crabs eat? I mean, they probably eat, like, dead fish and stuff. Yeah, so they just eat detritus. The scent of detritus. death would be coming from the pot. So I'm assuming that's kind of like a giant chum bag. I guess so, but I, it doesn't... I don't know. It, but, yeah, it, doesn't, it still doesn't make, make sense. any sense, like, that she would attack the bag instead of going for the boat. Also, why is she, like, so... I, I'm guessing that this is in the north. It looks like it's, like, Alaska's yeah, waters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It literally looks like an episode of Deadliest Catch. So, like... Why is she this far north? Why wouldn't she stay in, like, warmer coastal waters where she can hunt, like, shark and other, you know... Well, if you remember in the uh, Battle of Big Rock, she was in, like, South Africa eating great whites. Which well, makes sense. I mean, since it, it, that's what she was fed in the uh, 
a park. That's true. Also, it makes sense because we know that, like, big predatory uh, mammals in the ocean, like orcas, will migrate literally around the world in, like, you know, well, six months to, to, to chase prey or to go to places where prey... So maybe... I mean, this is... It's three years after the incident? How long is this after the incident? Uh, when was the last movie? Fallen Kingdom? Fallen Kingdom was 2017? Oh, 2018. And now it's... Well, this movie was supposed to be out last year, so... Right, but wait, this... So it's real time? Yeah, every all the events of the movies are always real time. Oh, so it would have ha it would have technically been... Th so yeah, three years. Yeah. It would have been three years. So three to four years. So maybe she's, like, figured out migratory patterns of different species and just happens to realize that, you know, crab pots are easy picking. <laughs> I mean, she did attack surfers. Is that like a, uh, when, I mean, okay, like, is that like crunchy outside, soft and chewy inside <laughs> like, with the crab pot? I don't no, know. She I, was needing her uh, vitamin D <laughs> or iron <laughs> deficiency. That's true. That's very true. And then uh, then we see probably my second favorite scene. I, I really did like the Mosasaur scene where we see what I'm assuming to be Rexy um, in like, Almost like a drive-in movie theater? What, what is the scene where we see Rexy? That is... It's a drive-in. Yeah, one, it's a drive-in theater. Uh, but that's actually from the prologue uh, that was released, I want to say a few months back, where it shows the Cretaceous period of Jurassic World. Uh, with, and then the old Rex, the 65 million years old Rexy fights the North American Giga. Oh, and then it transitions. oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's a clip from that. Oh, I didn't where even... Where Rexy's being chased by, I think it was the Dep Department of Fish and Wildlife? Yes. Into... Yeah, that's right, and then she encounters Which, the Giga. Question. Why didn't that zoo capture her and put her back into captivity? Because in Fallen Kingdom, she literally walks into, like, San Diego Zoo. I mean, and I'm like, here's why an... didn't you capture this? Here's another question. Like, oh, yeah, she she walks in and roars at the lion and then just walks out. And the... Can you imagine, like, being the security guard? <laughs> You're just like, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Or as uh, San Diego Animal Control <laughs> just peeling out when the buck rex walks through the door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like nope. It's just like nope. I don't get paid enough for this. Seven twenty-five. No, thank you. <laughs> but um. Oh shoot. What was I gonna say? Um. Also, here's another question. I know this is like silly because obviously the movie wouldn't work if they did this. But worse, you know, the, the animals got released in the United States. Yeah. The United States has the probably the single most advanced military in the world. These animals are a threat to the civilian population. Why wouldn't they have just deployed? Why wouldn't they have just sammed every single surface-to-air missile? Yeah, why wouldn't yeah. they have just sammed every single animal released and then hunted down all the other ones? Remember the like, black uh, market deal. You, okay, but you no no. Let me finish. All right, it's a black market deal that caused the animals to get out. First. Right. Followed by a bunch of shady millionaires that all kind of just left well they and most of them probably got eaten. didn't well some of them get uh most of them left actually because you've seen them peel out oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's right when before the indominus or indoraptor gets out that's right they're probably not going to go to the cops and say hey by the way there's a bunch of dinosaurs now but i mean you have to think there was like local police in the area right so like eventually somebody's going to see something I'm and be a, like a lot <laughs> And, like, call what? the police chief and be like, hey, boss, so you're not going to believe this. I mean, eventually, yes, they probably would have scrammed, you yeah, know, exactly. uh, at least the National Guard. Like, if this would have happened in real but life. you got to admit, someone calling you 911 and saying, hey, there's a dinosaur loose. In, is, in the Jurassic World world? On mainland. I, when everybody thought Isla Nublar was just going to blow up and leave them, you know, high and dry. But it already happened once in Jurassic Park 2. You know, she, with the with the buck rack so it's like why wouldn't they have believed them at that point you know what i'm saying like they're yeah how many years ago was that okay but plus you know uh, that you the... have to remember jurassic world was an established park that right. everybody knew it's like disney world right if you know I'm animal not kingdom let... got uh all their animals got loose do you really think people are gonna be like uh wanting to, to kill think? them yes <laughs>
if I Tom, saw a Tom, t- yes. if I saw a T Rex walking through my front yard, I would call the police. No, you probably crap yourself. Right? Yeah, I shit myself, <laughs> and then I call the police. But like, I don't know. I I feel like obviously this kind of logic it makes sense because obviously the movie couldn't happen. But if this were to happen in real life, but set in like the Jurassic World universe where it's established that like dinosaurs well, are they're... around, the military would have just absolutely destroyed these animals. With like no They're questions They're also asked. endangered. It doesn't Which, matter. At that legislation point, legislation says otherwise. Uh, listen, at that point, that's like okay, okay, that's a really stupid argument because like imagine if you have. I mean, that's the argument they're going. Josh, with, if you're though. getting mauled by a polar bear, I'm gonna shoot the bear. <laughs> well, I thank you for that, but we're not in that logic of world. Where, I mean, these animals were classified as endangered, and apparently they're gonna be going with that route because. As we talked about, the scene uh, that Rexy is breaking through the uh, drive-thru, you have the Department of Fish and Wildlife trying to trank her. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, it, what's it, the logic in that? It's just there's so many plot holes here. I mean, because I don't want to see Rexy get sh- you know, I, killed. No, me neither. But <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like, at what point do you, you know, yeah, say I, the, I, uh, her endangerment in, right. to the public beats her uh endangered st- uh, species status right exactly and i think like as soon as it as soon as an event like that would happen the military would just kind of scramble and and blow them up but that that's well that's, it's also california you never know how their senators are going i mean that, that's true that's neither hither nor dither um then we get a lot of dialogue and then we see uh dr grant and ellie sattler ellie sattler that's the you one you really cannot remember characters <laughs> i just I, I know their names, like the actors' names, but I just can't remember. Then why don't the, you just say the actor's name? I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to be in the mood. But then we see them and we already knew that was coming. Uh I we just watched the trailer again before we decided to uh to do this discussion. I said they both look really good for being as old as they are now. It's like neither of them were young people in the nineties. They were both like in their what, thirties, late thirties? Um, I'm not one to uh <laughs> talk about age. Oh, true. But, but <laughs> it's one of those things, yes, the actors do look very good for yeah, their age. Yeah, they look good. And then, uh, and then you have Jeff Goldblum, who is a god among men, I was that say, doesn't look like he aged much uh, at listen, all. Listen, I don't think Jeff Goldblum is actually, like, a person. I'm pretty sure he's just a vampire who comes out, like, every 20 years, <laughs> and he feeds on human souls. Like, by he, he, he produces a movie, right? or he acts in a movie. And then he goes back and, you know... The love that people feed him? <laughs> Is that what you're trying yeah, to say? The, the, the love, love the that people the people him? give him, he, it gives him enough strength <laughs> to go back into his dormant state. It's like, that that happens, right? He, he comes out literally, like, every 20 years, and he looks exactly what the was same. The, what was the last... Before Fallen King... Ragnarok. You know, it was Ragnarok, and then it was, um... What's that? Uh, Independence Day. He was also... Oh, yeah, he was in the new Independence Day. Uh, but... but yeah, he, he kind of just, He like, comes out, he acts in, like, three or four movies, and then he just disappears back to Transylvania, presumably. So, yeah, anyway, we were talking about Jeff Goldblum. I was interrupted by a phone call there. Um, do we want to keep talking about Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> I mean, we can make a whole podcast just on that. Mm. I Jeff mean, Goldblum like, theories. The uh, history of Jeff Goldblum's acting career. <laughs> and uh, try how they all interlink. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So every universe actually exists, and Jeff Goldblum just travels between them. Um, so then we see the Therizinosaurus, and you actually had a pretty good question about that. It almost looks like they made it a carnivore in this movie? Or maybe- I don't know. It, the way I saw it, because we know that DNA from the animal was put into the Indominus. Right. Um... I don't remember what quality. Apparently, it was probably for. the claws. I would assume. Uh, maybe. I mean, th- that's what Therizinosaurus is known for, right? Yeah, yeah, but hairy and claws. You know, we we we're talking about an, an hybrid theorized animal, so we don't really know what genetic trait they're apparently taking. I would True. assume claws. Um, we know Engine had the DNA. Yeah. However, we don't know if they ever actually produced the animal. Right. Which well, why would they did, or was it Biosyn? Oh, you know, because Biosyn good... is supposed to be making its return in this film. Oh, right, that's a good question. You know, the company that paid Nedry, yeah, 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 to get his ass killed. Well, they paid him for DNA. He just right. happened to get his <laughs> he ass just killed. Happened to, to um, 
so we don't really know who made this one uh from the look of the head though it does appear to have some shrink wrapping oh yeah definitely uh so it could be from Islo nublar mm -hmm. which then begs the question how many animals were on that island because that was a very small island to begin with see i think i like where you're going but i just kind of want to interject like i think this is a fake out in the trailer like what we see where it looks like it's like a big menacing dinosaur because uh uh what's her face the the lady with no personality from <laughs> from Jurassic, the redhead what's her name you are ashamed and it's bryce Dowd howard and she's a goddess don't be what is her what's her on screen claire name? claire that's it anyway the the redhead with no personality from jurassic world <laughs> i so we see in the trailer she had a management position managers don't usually get a personality with their underneath <laughs> So anyway, our friendship um, was before a work. So anyway, I, what I'm thinking, so because we see in the trailer that Claire is obviously on the ground, she's running from something. But do she's we know? Not really running, she's crawling. R whatever, she's trying to get away. Yeah, from it looks something. like she's in pain. And but I think this is a fake out. I really think she's she's crawling away from something else, and the Therizinosaurus just happened to be there, just like munching on some trees or like some leaves or something. And it's coming down, it's not stalking her here, it's just curious, and it's coming down to the water to get a drink. I'm going to play this whole, like, section uh, over the, the audio here, because I, I really think this is a fake out. I really think they're trying to, like, lure people in who don't know what this animal is. You know, like, like just people, regular people in the audience, you know, people are like, I mean, oh, maybe. I, I like I dinosaurs. Mean... And so, the, if you see this in the trailer, because, like, you and I both know what this is, in real life, what, yeah. what it was in real life, and we... There's some speculation. It wasn't. Mirrors and neck a little short though. The neck is kind of short, but it was like we both know that it wasn't exactly. It wasn't really it was a, a carnivore. It was a theropod, but it was on the herbivorous side. Right. Of we that there's part. some there's some debate whether it was omnivorous or if it was uh, completely a herbivore. We don't really know. But what I the mean, what the scientific do eat me exactly. But so like but, what the scientific so. evidence points to right now is that it was herb herbivorous, maybe omnivorous. So I really think that, that I'm going to play it again. This whole section here is a fake out because they show it. It looks like it looks like a big, scary dinosaur. And the regular people watching don't know. They just don't know what it is. And then if we look at the design of the head, because we see a close up of the head, they're obviously trying to keep this the hidden full, from the audience. Uh, creature yeah, the, hidden, the but... full creature hidden. We look at the head and it's very Triceratops like. With the beak and the well, it's not the the beak, but yeah, it's a beak. Yeah, so we we see that it's very Triceratops like, and, and we've never seen an animal in the Jurassic Park series anyway that was a carnivore with a mouth like this, have we? Um, toy lines, yes, if but not on not on the screen, but not on screen. Okay. Um, like I said, we don't know who designed this creature. True. Um. Maybe Engine, maybe Biosyn, maybe someone else. I don't know. True. Um, in the Camp Cretaceous, they introduced Manticore, which was another yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Gen X company. And I'm like, so we don't really know where this guy came from. Yeah. Um, I'm like I said, it, with it being a genetic mute uh, creation, they could have easily engineered it to be a predator. Yeah. Um. Don't know how the fans would take that if they did. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, these are the same people that got mad from Jurassic World Evolution because the Amontosaurus feet. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that see, actually happened. See, so, I, was, I read the comments on that. It was quite funny. That's why I'm saying I think this could really go either way. I think that if they did take it in the direction of it being a carnivore, that would be kind of cool because we've never seen a, carnivor a carnivorous uh, Therizinosaurus in any type of media. Um, I only know two... Dinosaurs in media at all. Exactly. So I think it would be pretty cool. One was walking with dinosaurs, and another one was from when dinosaurs roamed America. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but that wasn't actually th this creature yeah. itself. It was uh, someone else in his family. So I think that I think that either way it would be really cool. But it's just my personal opinion that this whole sequence is a fake out. Because I would do that if I was directing this movie. That's a fake out right there. All it's doing is coming down to get a drink, and she's hiding from something else. Something scarier. What do you think? It could be. 
I, I hope it's that. I hope that they didn't make the Therizinosaurus a carnivore. Because when I originally watched this trailer, when we saw the neck, mm -hmm. I thought it was the Pyroraptor. Like, the first time I watched this trailer, I thought it was the Pyro, because I wasn't paying that much attention. I was at work. Oh, okay. And so I, I, was, I was watching, and I'm like, oh, is she running from the Pyro? And then I saw the claws, and I'm like, oh, that's not a Pyro. What is she running from? No, um, I, I don't know. I'm... It could be, like you said, where it was just minding its own business and here comes Claire, you know, crawling across the ground. Looks like she's in pain, probably whimpering. Yes. And it came to investigate. Exactly. Or it could be the creature that caused the problem. I We don't know. Until we don't the movie know yet. Comes until out, the movie comes uh, out. Which does come out later this summer. I'm and, calling it right now, though. This is a fake out. Well... When the movie comes out, hopefully we're both off and we can... Uh... We'll put some money on it. <laughs> okay. So that 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 whole sequence, I really, really did like. Then we see Jeff Goldblum. We see a little bit... We see Dr. Wu, which is pretty cool. He he, he kind of let his hair down. Yeah, I was going to say, he looks, like a, he looks like a hippie now. <laughs> but but I, obviously we see Dr. Wu and he, he looks I, older. I kind of hope Dr. Wu's now on our side. I want him he... to get eaten. I won't lie to you. I, I've never liked his character. I mean, in the novel, he did get eaten by the I, raptors. Yeah, I know he got uh, eaten in the he novel. He got eaten by the raptors in uh, the novel. But uh, I don't know. From you know Jurassic Park all the way up to now, I, he seems like he only wants to just kind of create. He doesn't really care what you do with the clones after he makes them. Sure, but I still want him to get eaten. <laughs> I, I, it's just my opinion that, like, I don't know. I think he's just kind of... A, He's a good character, but he's just kind of like a a foil, almost. You mean he's a thorn in somebody's side, uh, preventing you to get to the bigger, badder uh, villain? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. So uh, I just want to see him get eaten. I think okay. he deserves it after all this time. He's, he's gotten off so scot-free. He's created all these things. He's caused hundreds, at least hundreds of other people to die. Now maybe thousands, because these creatures are on the mainland. His ass needs to get eaten. <laughs> It's only karma. <laughs> I mean, what's, you know, the whole uh, thing that Ian Malcolm said, or Jeff Goldblum said in the first one, God creates dinosaurs, God destroys dinosaurs, God creates man, man destroys God, dinosaurs, or man creates dinosaurs. dinosaurs man becomes God. <laughs> no, dinosaurs eat man. Dinosaur, oh yeah, dinosaurs eat man. Dinosaurs need to eat at least one man, and that is uh, Dr. Wu. Hmm. Um, so next we see the new Raptors, the new Raptors, which are running, they're doing parkour. Yeah. Like how did they get up there? Did like, <laughs> it looked literally they're running like rooftops and I'm like, so like, did we're, we're now Raptor parkour. That's what I'm saying. Or did like somebody like drone, like airstrike them, like drop them. <laughs> I don't know. Where are we even located in the city? That's, that's a great what question. What city is this? This looks... That, because it looks like something like in Italy or I like was even maybe say, Spain. I was even gonna say like Middle East almost. This looks like 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 Persia, like Prince of Persia type thing. Like, I don't know. Could the be Istanbul. Oh, you know what? Ooh, that's really good. It could be Istanbul. Or uh, is Constantinople still a city? No, or Constantinople is, like is a... Istanbul. Don't oh, you, okay. Don't you know I... the song? No. What song? <laughs> Istanbul is Constantinople. No, I did not know that song. I, oh. I know the names. I didn't realize they were the same, one and the same. Well, they're not because Constantinople is now Istanbul. Even old New York was once New Amsterdam. True. Why'd they change it? I can't say. People just liked it better that way. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, that was that's that's part of the song. Okay. So we see them running across the rooftops, and then we see uh, we see the Pyroraptor almost immediately after some some big old screen flashes. This thing looks amazing yeah for um a again no clue on who made it but for what it is it looks exactly what from what i can tell it looks like it's supposed to um the only thing it looks like is the claws on the hand yes the wing or the wings i should say don't cover the second yeah finger. It, it shouldn't be like it looks like it has the hands and then a and then wings coming off the hands a, almost a wing glove <laughs> yeah it really does look or a like sleeve that. like a wing sleeve you're right which but, it wouldn't have been like that no it, not 
in life, but remember, these are clones. Sure, no, uh, and I... Uh, genetically <laughs> modified animal. I just think that it's so, finally nice to see some, some proper feathered dinosaurs, even though, like, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh, this really isn't accurate. But uh, you're right, it is a clone. It's what people think this animal would have looked like when it was created, either by InGen or Biosyn. We don't know. Um, I to love... be honest, I think it might be Biosyn, as in just like the other raptor that mm -hmm. I still cannot pronounce the name. I am sorry. <laughs> I have a speech impediment. Um, it could be the answer to uh, from Biosyn on the Velociraptor going, hey, we can make it uh, look you know, more accurate, even though one doesn't have feathers and the one that does have feathers kind of aren't properly feathered, right. even though it has feathers. It has feathers. It, its feathers aren't probably what actually should be on the See, animal. See, I think, I, I know that they had to do certain things in the movie to make it so, like, the, so it was still more menacing. Like, you still have to give it, like, the three fingers on its, on its hand so it can, like, jump onto people and, like, tear them apart. But the... I, you know, it almost feels like a wasted effort because you, you took the time to m give these animals feathers, but you didn't take the time to do it properly. Well, remember, they also are characterized from Universal. True. I mean, you want, I guess when you're making a dinosaur movie, you want them to look, you know, unique and stuff so you can market it better. Right. So people can tell them apart. But it's one of those things. It's like. The animals themselves are already unique, and all you just have to do is put a splash of color, or different colors on them, or a pattern, and they're pretty much good. Yeah. I mean, on, honestly, though, I love the coloration, obviously, because pyro means fire, right? And so we, yeah. we get, like, a red, gray-looking dinosaur. And... This is actually the second pyroraptor that I know of in media. Really? Um... Back in the early 2000s, when Discovery Channel did, uh, I want to say, Planet Dinosaur? Oh! Uh, they did a Pyro episode. That's right. The Pyro Raptor episode. It was kind of like a Gulliver's Travels. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember that. So we can kind of compare the two, I guess, you, in a later video, kind of compare the two. Yeah, we could do that. Um, clearly, one's going to look more scientifically accurate. However... If I remember correctly, the Pyro Raptor in the 2000 did not have the uh, the actual feathers on the arms. No, I don't think it did. It either. just had like a a red fuzz, which you know back then that's what we thought they had was what we, I mean. It, it was still, called what Dino fuzz. Still, I mean, it was still feathers. Yeah, it's proto it was, feathers. It was uh, not proper like bird feathers. To be fair, at the time, that's that's what they thought that most dinosaurs had was you know proto feathers because we hadn't found anything with proper feathers yet. Um, Archaeocrix was literally, um, uh, found in, like... Well, I meant the before original. predating, predating Pyroraptor. You see what I'm saying? The, the, Pyroraptor the was a rare animal bef uh, back in that. Well, no, in what, what I mean is, like, they found Archaeo uh, Archaeopteryx. Oh, my God. Um, but we know that Archaeopteryx came later than, than Pyroraptor in the evolutionary tree. You see what I'm saying? I thought Acreactrix was in, like, the early Cretaceous. Maybe. I uh, the, I think we're getting into too much. We're, let's just keep talking about the trailer. Okay, what's this scene with, what like, the, the what, locusts? Yeah, what the hell is this scene? Are those dinosaurs? Are these, like... I'm assuming locusts. I'm gonna say, like, it's either birds or locusts, but it's just, like... A huge mass of something. Are they supposed to be dinosaurs? What could be... I mean, birds oh, well, are they, dinosaurs, well, but... They, I was going to say it couldn't be dinosaurs. Or are these supposed to be like, uh, 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 oh my God. I still think of locusts because look at the environment we're in. It literally looks like a giant swarm of locusts coming out of nowhere. It almost looks too, like the individuals almost look too big to be locusts though. Maybe prehistoric locusts. Maybe like carboniferous type locust. I, I don't know. Wouldn't make any sense, but Hey, you know, it is what it is. And we get a shot of some characters talking, which nobody really cares about. And then we see the the newer Raptors again, and we get Owen on his motor, his fa faithful motorcycle. Uh, what's the name of these the new the new Raptors? If I I honestly mean, have species no idea. or actual names? Oh, like species. Um, 
Are these supposed to be Velociraptor? No, the they're the uh, raptor from uh, Canada. And if you know the name, put it in the comments, please. Cause yeah, please. I'm I, I'm blanking. Put the on pronunciation it. there as well. Do we just want to look it up? I mean, you can, but it doesn't really help. Canadian raptor species. I mean, you're probably going to get birds of prey. Oh, you know what? You're probably right. Type in uh, Jurassic World with that. Jurassic World. Canadian raptor species. Oh, here we go. Here's like an article. Introduce two new raptor species. Atro yeah, that's it. Atrociraptors? Atrociraptors? Like atrocity? Like atrociraptors? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. But... So uh, atrociraptor. That's, I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I should say. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure. I'm not very like I said, speech impediment. Um, but yeah, um, apparently there's going to be four individuals uh, wow. for this these raptors, and each one has a code name, like uh, Owen's old group. So this has got to be this has got to be like Biosyn, right? I would assume so, since they're so less basically naked uh, dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, they're about the same size as blue. So my guess is they probably were like engines prototype of, hey, we can do a Raptor too. Oh, you mean Biosyn? Or Biosyn, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, like, I here, said engine, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. So like here, let's do our Raptor too. Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right was, about that. Most likely they probably got the Raptor DNA and said, hey, how do we, you know, make our own Raptor without doing the exact same yeah, thing? Yeah, without making it velociraptor exactly so they probably just that was one of their first animals yeah so that's pretty cool that we're gonna get a couple of new raptors but yeah big old naked <laughs> lizards walking on two legs yeah. um so then we see Allos allosaurus obviously and is that allosaurus it's yeah, got, that it's, is i was about to say it's got to be the allosaurus that's with the, the adult allosaurus model from big rock okay which was a redesigned and look not pronated hands oh my god i didn't even notice that its hands are actually correct wow look at that I... facing inward looking like a clap not a you know I, my wrist are broken <laughs> not a limp limp wristed uh yeah the animal was uh redesigned from uh fallen kingdom which was supposed to be a juvenile male right that actually gets killed uh in the trailer and in the actual movie uh, but this is supposed to be an adult female. Now, at least that's the one in Big Rock. Gotcha. This is a totally different area. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, hell. I was about to say, yeah, this is like, this is still that same city. That yeah, that's the same city that Claire was running from, from, from the, the Atrociraptor. Yeah, the Atrociraptor. Um, that's doing parkour. <laughs> yes. That someone um, has to get on the rooftop. But, yeah, it, you know, now that I think about it, this Allosaurus could have been the one that was sold at the auction. Because we see it being shipped oh, yeah, uh, we do, don't we? at the end of the film, uh, Fallen Kingdom. So this could have been the adult form of that animal. That's true. So um, what, what's the second animal we see over here? It's that's Carnotaurus. That's Carnotaurus. That's Carnotaurus. That's the Carnotaurus? Yep. Why is uh, it so big? <laughs> Comparatively to the Allosaur. Engine. I, I guess so. Also, it's so bulky. Why? Is, I thought this was like a tyrannosaur. Like, look at how no, bulky. No, that's Conotaurus, and he's missing his horns. I was about to say his horns are gone. Are they're very, very, they're very tiny? Either very tiny or they're like non-existent on this animal. That's really the Carnotaurus, the, the, right there in this the scene. Yeah, that's the Carnotaurus. I mean, I see the nodules on the back, which is totally well, somewhat accurate. But really, this is. I mean, and it also has really tiny arms. But that's the animal. Yeah, it's it just looks so bulky. One is more bulky uh, than actual Carnotaurus. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it almost reminds me of Disney's dinosaur Carnotaurus. I think that's kind of what they were going for. Oh lord! <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get like, me wrong, the, the design of those was pretty cool as like a movie monster, but yeah, but it's the size of a T Rex. <laughs> yeah, it's so big. Look at how big it is. I mean, this one's no, is not half that size, or it's like half the size of that, and then con an actual Carnotaurus would be. It would a be fraction. I was gonna say it would. Size. It'd be dwarfed by the Allosaurus. Yeah. If this is the adult Allosaurus, this that Carnotaurus should be absolutely dwarfed by it. Yeah. Wow, that's a shocker. I really thought that this was like a, a different Tyrannosaurus species. Nope, over that here is Carnotaurus that we were gonna get like uh, 
like a Tarbosaurus, like a juvenile Tarbosaurus nope, or something that's like that? kind of torso. That's crazy. I had... You really can't tell. No, because the way they... Uh, the sun is hitting it from the back. Yeah, you can't really tell. Yeah, the way that they frame it, it makes it so... Um, vague. It's it's just But hard, you gotta admit, the to Conotaurus was one... If they're using the same model from Fallen Kingdom, mm -hmm. at least it's one of the good models. Yeah, from that movie. yeah, no, that I really like the Carnotaurus. Uh, that, that was probably one of the best models in that film from the newer dinosaurs. Actually, I can say. Um, but yeah, that that's the Carnotaurus. So then we have kind of the last scene or the last sequence in the uh, in the movie. Well, the last two animals in the trailer. Yeah, which is. This, uh, this pterosaur. Quetzalcoatlus. I was gonna say, we're gonna say it's Quetzalcoatlus, right? It's gotta be. Like, it, it's giant. Uh, that and the fact that we've seen it in the prologue of the Jurassic World Dominion 65 million years ago. It's only fair that they reused the model and later in the film. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's. It's a Quest of I mean, it doesn't look bad. No. The wings it, are a little small. The wings are actually really small. I mean, the um, animal actually had small wings for body size. So that, that is true, but I, I, I feel mean, like... I can't say anything bad about it. I, I like it. I like the look of it. Um, Why is it attacking the plane? Plot? You have to see the movie. <laughs> it's just just plot. I mean, I don't know why do any of these animals act like they do. We also know that. Well, we we, <laughs> we speculate that Quetzalcoatlus wasn't an aerial predator. It would basically just get on the ground and pick off stuff, you know. Which is what they did in the prologue. Yeah, kind of like a weird it old just kind of like well, it flew in and then kind of goes in stork mode. Uh, yeah, but yeah, this one's attacking a plane for Which some reason. Doesn't make. A whole lot of sense but hey you know you do what you got to do right i i guess so then we see the triceratops no. oh no 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 it's not it's this um, is a herd of nasuto i was about to say that's not triceratops which begs the question because in fallen kingdom we didn't see this animal this this isn't taurosaurus no this is nasuto ceratops we did not see this animal in fallen kingdom uh-huh then we were magically surprised to see it in Battle of Big Rock, where we saw a male, a female, and a juvenile. Yes. And now in this trailer, it looks like like several animals, like a small herd. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And I'm they're, like, and they're so like attacking the jeep that the people are riding They're attacking in? some type of vehicle, yeah. Why do all the dinosaurs have to just attack everything now? Because that's what the uh, <laughs> plot demands. I guess so. Um... So then we see a scene of Blue's baby, and we also see a scene where it looks like who who is this girl? We that's Maisie from Fallen Kingdom. Oh, that's Kingdom. Maisie. I hope she dies. The human clone, <laughs> and you want it to die. Well, yeah, because she's the one who let them all out. Dude, she, you know she how did kind of uh, cause all the problems. Can you imagine how many people out there want her dead? That have like lost their family, their friends, their relatives to like these to dinosaurs being on the mainland. And if they knew that it was literally all her, she'd be like the most wanted person in the in in, in the world. Um, so that that kind of wraps up the trailer. The last one that we see is we see the shot of Maisie, which I honestly didn't even recognize her, and she's in like a cage, almost like a hide hot like a high hide. Um. What is this? What is this? Most likely, it is the novel adaptation of the High Hide. It really I looks mean, like the High Hide. Um, the one in the movie from Lo the Lost World wasn't. It was the High Hide, but it wasn't based, yeah, it wasn't off, based the off the actual novel. Book. This one, I guess, looks like the novel one with a uh, predator cage on the bottom of it that she. Climbed into before the T-Rex bitter or something? I was going to say, is this... What what animal is this? This doesn't look like the T-Rex. It this, could be the Giga. I was about to say, this looks like the, the Giga because, like... I don't know. It's just a big mouth of teeth. It's just a big mouth of teeth. And, like, what what kind of, like, angle is this? Is this, like, bending... Is it bending down to get her? Is she, like, laying in the cage? Or I, it's I like, don't know. Is it, like, jumping? Well, on the bottom of the screen, it looks like feet. <laughs> So the neck probably is broke in this angle. Oh, yo, yo! I didn't even see the feet down there. So like, I'll, I'll, I'll probably I'm, enhance that. And I mean, it kind of looks like this animal broke his neck to bite this. Cage. Yeah, it bent down and broke its neck, and then decided to bite the cage just to get it, Maisie. 
which uh, I, I hope it gets through the cage. <laughs> and that's the last animal. No, we see the Dilo. Yes, the Dilophosaurus the... is back but... from 1993 with a new skin. <laughs> but it looks, the animatronic, it doesn't look that good. To be honest, it kind of reminds me of the uh, water ride from uh, <laughs> uh, Universal Studios. <laughs> it really does. Like, I'm sorry, but I know... The, the original animatronic they used looked great. Yes. The, you know, the small thing, I mean, you can still see the string pull out the frill. Right, but you're if you're only for paying attention. Yeah, but it's still, you, I mean, for what it was, it was great. However, this animal looked totally different from that animal. Does the, it? Yeah, the paint, it looks a lot brighter. Oh, you're right. Because if you remember in Jurassic Park, it was like greens and reds and oh, it had like yeah, a, yeah. a tan line. This one's like bright orange. Yeah, this one is like bright orange yellow. But I, I, you know, and it's screaming at Claire, which for I would like, no I, apparent reason. I would like to do that too. But <laughs> you like yelling at anybody. But so I mean, as somebody who does effects for videos, this is a bad one. This is a really bad animatronic. Like, it just looks so lifeless. You know what I'm saying? Now that I've like, fr I, we're looking at the picture on screen, and now that I see it, it just, it almost looks too perfect. It doesn't have like that, that like feel of being a, a real animal, you know, like, like in the original Jurassic Park, what made it unique was like those little, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Imperfections that made them feel larger than life. You know what I mean? Cause like you made them, uh, like motion blurs and stuff that made them seem like an actual animal yeah. instead of high resolution computer graphics like a video game where you're like i know this is fake well even with even with the like the animatronics in jurassic park it was the imperfections in those animatronics that made them seem believable because animals aren't perfect in shape they have different like size like you know i i know that everything is you know bisymmetric bisymmetrical but well to some degree yeah to some degree but everything has like imperfections so i, I would like to see an animatronic that doesn't look so clean I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it looks good, and I'm happy to see that they're using an animatronic, but I'd rather see something that feels more organic. Because this looks, it just looks like now, plastic. Here's, here's, it just looks like here's a question. Figure. Now, in the next clip, it shows it basically in the face of Claire. Yeah. How big is this animal? Is it like the actual scientifically accurate size? Oh, you mean like the, the actual like big Dilophosaurus? Yeah, is it an actual Dilophosaurus, you know, Dilophosaurus size? Or is it standing on something? Because the engine Dilophosaurus was were leaning. tiny. And in Camp Cretaceous, when we see this, uh, another one of these, it's only about five foot. That's a good question. I mean, it kind of looks like it is about five foot here in the trailer because I... It, well it's taller than claire in the frame right but again we don't know what's leading up to this and we don't really how tall is she she's probably like four, uh five, bryce tower tower i do not know you have to google that okay well we, we we know that it looks bigger at least a little bit bigger than the the Still original has that t-rex like look. head though it sure does doesn't it which makes me think engine yeah and the shrink wrapping around the head the the shrink wrapping plus the I mean, plus the the idea, like just the it looks like like engine, and uh, that that kind of wraps up the trailer. We see the we see the Giga, but we know what that is. We've well, and this that. one might be different. It might be different. It might be different from the uh, one we've seen in the actual uh, prologue clip. That's true. That was released. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. It looks different. I mean, it doesn't have the spines that you've seen from that one. So. That's true. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. Wraps up our discussion of the trailer and uh, and uh, all that. And your ranting of everyone in the film must die. <laughs> well, yeah. but uh, Is there any character that you're rooting for? <laughs> Dr. Grant. Okay, he I just kind of got thrown into it, you know what I'm saying? Like he the always first gets movie, kind of thrown into exactly. Something. I can I can sympathize with that. <laughs> he's just thrown into a situation, and he's just like, well, I guess I'll go with it. So, any final thoughts? Um, I can't wait for the film to come out. 
to at least try answer some of the questions I have about it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I want to see, hopefully, uh, Frontier makes a good DLC of this movie for oh, yeah, a for Jurassic it. World Evolution 2, because some of these animals would be great in that game. Yeah, a very welcome addition. I think to sum it up for me, my final thoughts, I'm excited to see the movie. I'm I'm happy that they're going to end it. Hopefully we don't get any more Jurassic movies after this. I know that sounds like mean, but... Blasphemous. <laughs> I just... I'm so tired of reused franchises anyway. Um, and I want to see Maisie die. I want to see Dr. Wu die. <laughs> Pretty much anyone that's not Sam Neill. Yes. <laughs> die, okay. Everybody else can just go So in. as long as the original cast survives, everybody else can die. Honestly, I think it'd be kind of funny if Jeff Goldblum died. People wouldn't like it, but it'd be funny. How would it be funny? Just, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if he did that, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Um, thanks for discussing this with me. See, I wouldn't have known as much about the the trailer if you hadn't have been here because, like I said, I'm a fan, but I'm not a, I'm not a super fan. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know really what, what you want you to say that that one <laughs> that's fine all right we will catch you on the next one bye